So I'm looking at today's scripture. We're coming from Micah 6. Uh, the focus is going to be on Micah 6, 8. But I find God to be ever so, so interesting. You know, I mean, you can tell God is always a father. Okay. So Israel's being goofy. They have gone back to sin. They have gone back to idolatry. So then Micah, uh, uh, in, influenced by God, and he, he begins to uh, ask these questions. And starting at verse 6, it says, wherewith, wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings or with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for, for the sin of my soul? If any of us who have been in a relationship knows it gets goofy like this, like I don't want you to do all this extra stuff. What, what, what you're trying to offer me is harder than what I asked for. It's harder. It's harder. And this is where it goes back to what, uh, the Bible, that obedience is better than sacrifice. Someone who's, who, who's trying to keep you in a relationship, keep, keep you in a business, keep you in a church, they're always try, trying to offer you stuff that you're not interested in. I don't want that. What I want is the simple things that I ask for. I was uh, at lunch with 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 my father a year a year ago. Um, I asked the waitress. I was like, "Look, may I have X, Y, and Z, whatever?" She said, "All right." Uh, she came back. She didn't bring back X. She maybe bought Y, but she, she she bought Z. So my father got his order exactly how he wanted it, but I I didn't get mine the, the, the way I asked. So when I bring it up to her, she says, well, that's, that's what your father is eating, and, and he likes it. So, <laughs> so, I, so I look at her. I say, look. Man, please give me what I asked for. It's the only reason why I'm in here. It's the only reason why I'm in here. And I said it to her just like that. And you can see her and her personality straighten up. Like, okay, okay. You have got to give people who, who you're obligated to for a moment or for a lifetime, what they ask for. Please, just give them what they ask for. They're not asking for anything. No, 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 ten thousand of rams or ten thousand of rivers of oil. They're not asking for your firstborn for for, for your transgression of verse seven, the fruit of your body for for the sin of my soul. Not asking for any of that. Look. Here we are in verse 8. And he showed thee, O man, what is good. What doth the Lord require of thee? He showed thee what, what is good. So you already knew. Have, have, have you had a situation where people try to act new on you? Like, what do you mean? Uh, what is tithing? Uh, what is marriage? Uh, what what is truly a uh, relationship? Oh, uh, do do I do I really owe you that money? I I thought that people get real goofy on you. But Micah says he has showed the old man what is good. What is good means what is God. He already told you. That means you already knew. You just acting real goofy right now. And what do if the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, which means uh, 
to do what it is God commanded us to do. Justice. Justly. Justice. Justice. This justice isn't fair. So is by his discretion. However, he told you what to do. And to love mercy. Love mercy. Don't, don't just love it when you get it. Love giving it. And to walk humbly with thy God. To walk humbly. That means passive, yet actively uh, being faithful. Passive, yet actively being faithful. Stop acting like you don't know what is required of you. This is why Micah used the word require. What doeth the Lord require of thee? If we do these things, Jesus, life will be so much simpler.